Hello, welcome to the third video of the ninth chapter. In this video, we will introduce you to drawing functions. Let's go. First, let's start with the initialization you mentioned in the final words of the previous video. Almost all peripherals need to be initialized after startup so that they can work with the settings that suit you. In our case, we need to do the same, call OLED init, which will do the configuration for us when the display is started. We will not analyze the inside of the function in detail as we have implemented it using the sample code provided in the datasheet. On page 6 of the datasheet, called OLED display datasheet PDF, you will find a short code line with some comments and an explanation. This is the SSD1306BZ function. You may find a similar implementation in our code with minimal modifications and additions. Using a display is not as easy as you might think. There are a lot of things you have to do before changing the color of the first pixel. That's right. But now we can say that we are close to the goal because we have reached the functions needed for drawing. The first and most important step is to change the color of a pixel. You should tell the function what is the desired color of the point with the given x and y coordinates. The OLED draw pixel checks if the given pixel is on the screen and if so, it adjusts the pixel to the color. Since we only want to modify a single bit of a given element of a large array, we need to use bit operations. A value of 1 can be set with a bitwise OR operation and a value of 0 with a bitwise AND operation, so we need two solutions for the two colors. If we can draw a point, we can draw a line, which is nothing more than a set of points drawn on a straight line between two points. The OLED draw line function expects two points, two coordinates per point, and of course, the color you want to draw the line with. We won't go into the algorithm for drawing the line, but if you want to learn more about it, you can search for it under the name Bresenem's line algorithm. What else can you draw from the lines? For example, a rectangle, which is a regular shape anyway. For a rectangle, it is enough to give the coordinates of two opposite vertices, since the points of the other two vertices can be calculated from them. And if you have the coordinates of all four vertices, you can use your well-established line drawing function. So we can create our OLED draw rectangle function by calling the OLED draw line function four times. And what else can you draw from the lines? Practically anything. In order to support line plotting, we have created a function that can connect coordinates given as input to continuous straight lines. The input of the OLED draw polyline function is an array of pixels, or coordinate pairs, the size of the array, and last but not least, the color of the lines to draw. Now that we can display any polygon, what's the next step? Other commonly used shapes are circles and circular arcs, which we also thought would be useful to add to our toolbox. To create our circle, we used Presenem's circle algorithm, which you can also check out. There are four parameters to be passed to the OLED draw circle function, which are, in order, the x and y coordinates of the center of the circle, the radius of the circle, and the color of the circle. The algorithm for drawing the arc is not discussed in detail in the chapter, but only the use of the following parameters. The parameters of the algorithm are as follows. The x and y coordinates of the center of the arc. r is the radius of the arc, the angle that defines where our arc starts. In our example, it is 45 degrees. It might be confusing at first that in this library we calculate the angles from the bottom of the circle. The last parameter is the angle that tells us where our arc ends. In our example, it is 180 degrees. We are now done with the functions that can be used for drawing. There is one more thing to do, and that is to print the text. The fonts you can use have already been copied. Now the question is how to get them on the screen. First, let's start with a single character and write it to the buffer. For this task, we have created the OLED write car function. When calling the function, you need to specify the character, font, and font color. The function first checks whether the character given as an argument is valid, that is, 
whether its implementation exists in our code. Thinking back, we implemented ASCII characters from decimal 32 to 126. If the decimal value of our input character is out of this interval, we cannot print this character. We return an error, that is, a value of 0, from the function. Otherwise, we can continue executing our function with another check to see if the desired font size physically fits on the screen. To do this, we simply add the width and height of our character to the current coordinates of the cursor, which, if smaller than the width and height of the display, we can start printing without any further action. Writing to the buffer is implemented using two for loops. The outer loop iterates over the height of our characters, while the inner loop iterates over the width of our characters. Let's illustrate with an example. We want to write the character hashtag in 7 times 10 font. We use characters 7 pixels wide by 10 pixels high, that is, the outer for loop must iterate over the elements of line 108. The decimal value of hashtag is 35, but since we keep track of characters from 32, we must always subtract a constant 32 from the decoded decimal value and then multiply by the height of the letter. This means that if the input to the function is the character hashtag, then the font underscore part will be equal to the 30th element of font.data, that is 35 minus 32 times 10 equals 30, which is the first element of the desired line 108. So our outer loop will step through this array one by one until we reach the last element of the character. Our inner loop iterates, to use a technical term, over the selected array element bit by bit, checking whether it is 1 or 0, and then depending on the result, colors the pixel using the OLED draw pixel function. On a successful printout, we update our cursor value and return the character that was printed as the return value for validation purposes. At first, I didn't think it would be so much work to display a character, drawing everything from pixel to pixel. But what happens next? One by one, we call the OLED write car function on the characters of the input text until we get to the null character that terminates the text. We are now at the point where the only thing left to do to get the display working is to write the program code and try it out until it works. But we'll cover that in the next video. Until then, we say goodbye. See ya!